This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. Says I just your ass. This is my You're gonna acknowledge me. What's going on, everybody, guys and girls? Welcome back to another edition of the SmackDown Review. Right here on the WWE Podcast. As always, I'm one of the hosts of the show, Michael Ritter. You can find me on X at Michael Five Ritter and on Instagram at uh Michael Ritter5. Also one of the hosts of the Football Function Podcast. Available wherever you get your podcast. Joining me once again after a few weeks off, my humble co-host, John Carrasco. You can find him on X at B-I-G-G underscore speaker, big speaker. So, John, how you doing, bud? Glad to have you back here on the show. Well, yeah, man. I mean, of course, we've been, well, I've been a little busy and, of course, had a little sickness that kind of struck me. Oh, man. I'm still feeling it. You know, I'm definitely, I apologize if I sound a little bit different. But yeah, I'm definitely still going through this little uh, throat issue that I had. Came across last week, I guess you could say. And yeah, I mean, it's still lingering on and it sucks, I guess you could say. But other than that, man, I've been good. Just trying to take it day by day, I guess you could say. And of course, I mean, I had some other events kind of come up, you know, funeral and of course some softball. So yeah, I tried to. I guess take care of that all in a good two weeks process or yeah. timing, I guess you could say, you know. So it's it's been a eventful little time for me, I guess you could say. And um I'm, I missed it. Definitely did. Funky town and everything like that. And yeah, man, I mean there there was some stuff that kinda got brought to attention, you know, you showed me over the time being gone and everything. Yeah. And Yeah, so if my research is correct if my due diligence that I've done is accurate, people absolutely hate when you say, I guess you can say. So I'm just going to go ahead and preface. We're going to let you, you know, address it and all that, but I'm going to go ahead and preface and say, we're going to try to work it out this we're episode. Working we're working on it. You know, <laughs> it's tough. And this is nowhere near the same. This is just a, a little lighthearted comparison. Well, I'm not sure if you've known – that the Papa John's founder or whatever, and I know he was like a, a big up in Papa John's. He actually got canceled and pretty sure he had to sell the company because he was like extremely racist. Mm -hmm. Like he kept saying that he couldn't, um, he couldn't stop saying racial slurs yeah. for whatever reason. And he even said it was like 18 months, like 18 months went by and he was still just in his regular vocabulary. He couldn't get racial slurs out. So, a simple, innocent thing, like I guess you can say, that can come up very frequently when you're in a conversation, you know? I, I totally understand, but I had a problem saying the word both early in my podcasting career. You know, it's pronounced both, the word both. There's no L in there. And just growing up, and I know people that still do it. I know a lot of professional podcasters that say both instead of both. But it's one thing that was brought to my attention early in my podcasting career, and I had to kind of, you know, shake that out a little bit. But it's just one of those things that uh, I don't know. I thought it, I thought it was funny just because we don't I, I check the I did too. We I, don't check the reviews, you know. Yeah, but I, I knew I was saying that too much. I told you at the very beginning, and man, it's just kind of like stuck with me this whole time. And I'm working on it. Let, let, me, let me tell you, I'm going to work on it from here on out. But yeah, man, I mean, it's just like one of those things that you don't even think about, and it just happens, I guess you could say. And there it goes. There's one. All right, there's one. We'll have a counter. If you guys are, I know there was one review that mentioned a drinking game. <laughs> and if they took a drinking game every time John said yeah, it. That was funny. Well, let's just say, holy cannoli, you would have a – we'd have I'll to walk you to your car. and You better not even go to your car, all right? <laughs> We're walking you to an Uber. We are just – let's just stay there, all right? Let's just stay there because you probably throw it up or something like that. But oh, nonetheless, man. it's – uh, you know, hey, I mentioned on the last podcast, you know, we want feedback. Oh, we yeah. want oh, yeah. the <clears throat> listeners to feel like they can come to us whenever there is a, you know, a comment, a concern, whatever it is. And, you know, we can address it and get it fixed. That's what this is. We're going to try to slowly work out that from your vocabulary. And 
you know, it's going to be a little bit of a grind. Oh, yeah. You know, it is what it is. I, I can already hear myself saying it. You can just, you know, just every sentence, you know, every time you get on the mic and every time you are giving some analysis, you know, or just your opinion on wrestling, just anytime you feel about to come up, just, you know, it's like you got a bark collar on, you know, like for a dog, you know, just think that it's going to just Shut buzz up. you every time, you know, just something like that. But. You know, it is what it is. Oh, it's man, one of those things. Yeah. And I will say, you know, I kind of touched on it. You know, the, the feedback thing. Mm-hmm. We prefer it come through Patreon. We prefer it come through Twitter or, sorry, X, our DMs. Um, anyway, you know, Discord. That's one thing I will say. We had several people reach out and give me some, you know, whether it was critical feedback, mm-hmm. positive feedback, whatever. I always appreciate that nonetheless. But uh, I do think taking, taking it negatively to reviews is a little bit of a pardon my french a little bit of a cowardly approach to be completely honest because it's it's anonymous you know and you have that right to give an honest review that's your right as a listener but whenever a show offers you the option the host that you're criticizing publicly and you know going out of your way to negatively review the show Whenever they're giving you an option to communicate with them directly to mm-hmm. improve this. And if it doesn't get approved, hey, you know, it is what it is. Then do what you got to do. Go to the hierarchy or whatever, you know. That's just the process of the whole thing. But I just feel like doing it through the reviews anonymously is like a way for them to poke at us, but us not poke back. You know, yeah. that's that's kind of – we welcome all criticism. That's the oh, thing, yeah. like oh, yeah. without a doubt. But that's one thing I will say is if you think that you're going to – come at us sideways so to speak you know if um you know if it gets to a point to where we know all right this is just someone who doesn't like our show and they're going to you know try to leave a a negative review if you think that you know we're the type of host that would just do that without saying anything back you definitely got the wrong podcast host just being completely honest with you there a little you know behind the curtain thing so we just want to you know be direct in our own way of saying like hey it's all subjective it's all wrestling talk and we will definitely love to uh, to chat it up with you but Nonetheless, um, I got a bachelor's degree in talking you know what. So that was hard earned, so to speak. And it's like one of those things. I don't do it for fun. I do it because I'm good at it. And I win when I do it. So it is what it is. We can go ahead and put that in the uh, storage bin for now. John is going to try to stop saying, I guess you can say, (laughs) we're going to try to get the show going smoothly We'll bring the criticism oh, on, bring the comments on, the feedback. That's what we want, guys. And it's shout out to welcome. shout it's out to welcome. those of you that have done it. I do appreciate mm-hmm. that legitimately. The um, the I guess disclaimer that I just mentioned was for the negative reviewers out there. That the ones that won't message us directly, the ones that like to do it anonymously, those are the ones that we say, "Hey, you're more than welcome to hop on these microphones and let's hit record and let you talk since it's so easy, you know, since it's one of those things that, I you know, say, once this red light turns on, that's yeah, the it's whole, a little bit different. Trust yeah. me, talking into a microphone, especially whenever you're by yourself, like sit down, record a SmackDown review by yourself and let's let us review it. That's what I would love to see. You know, it's one of those things. But nonetheless, guys, we do appreciate you for tuning into this show. Hopefully you will continue to tune in and the, uh, the show will get up to speed and up to the standard in which you expect it to uphold. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to be talking about the SmackDown that aired on August 4th, 2023 from Dayton, Ohio. Location breakdown, as usual, brought to you by the loyal listener of the year, DJ Kuzmo. So this one started off with probably the hottest guy, and I, I shouldn't have said that, you know, pause, but the hottest wrestler in terms of (laughs) crowd reaction, LA Knight, you know, it came out with, uh, the crowd could, I mean, if you were there in attendance, you probably were waiting to see LA Knight, hoping that at some point, because you knew that he was going to have that one-on-one match. You didn't know when during the show that it was going to happen, but I didn't expect it to happen first. And nonetheless, his music hits first. What did you think about what he had to say whenever he came out? Pretty much just cutting a short promo taking shots at the wrestlers that are in there. He does say some nice things about Sheamus, saying how he's won the World Heavyweight Championship. He has won the – I don't know if he's won the WWE. I'm, I assume he has. He's won the United States for sure. He just went on to name some accolades and then, you know, obviously took a couple shots at Sheamus, calling him a pasty goof, a cross-eyed halfwit. Just many other things as he, you know, tries to put himself over for this battle royal tomorrow. But what were, what were your thoughts 
on LA Knight coming out and opening up the show? Well, of course, man. I mean, LA Knight, he's doing his thing, getting the pop right off the back and everything. And man, I'm not mad at this. This is dude. He's definitely elevated himself from what the manager of what was their dang name? Male models, maximum, maximum male models. models. See, that Max was Dupree. a whole. Yeah, whole gimmick that I wasn't with right there, you know. Once he started coming over to the wrestling side of it and everything, that's whenever I was, like, starting to get behind him. But, I mean, he's definitely, man, he he has the WWE Universe riding with him. So, he's uh, attraction, you know, people are coming to see him, shirts, signs. So, yeah, he's definitely doing his thing. But the whole situation that they got going on with the little, what is it, Royal Rumble? The Battle Royal. Battle Royal. Well, yeah. I mean, it's 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 cool, I guess, but I don't I don't really see no no point for it in my my eyes, and I, I don't know, man. It's just a whole. I don't know. I just can't get with it. But I mean, him being in the little situation, you know, little group. I hope he can at least get a dub. I guess you know because this him losing. I mean, of course, it's not affecting him or anything like that. But it's definitely it's starting to get a little little too much for me so i mean yeah if he can pull this out you know the whole win i guess that that'll be something good for me right there and this short promo from la Knight does lead to the much anticipated match between sheamus and himself it was announced last week that we were going to get this match and for some reason several other of the announced battle royal participants it wasn't all of them even la Knight said at the beginning of his promo this isn't all of them but this is just some of them and that must have been the the main people, obviously, they're not going to put any of the big-time wrestlers in it. Most of those guys or girls are in feuds, you know? Most of those wrestlers are already involved with a match going on at SummerSlam. So they can't just pull them. They're probably going to have maybe a surprise, a return. I don't know if there's anybody who could return that would be worthy of this this battle royal because the names I've heard that could possibly return are much bigger, you would think, you know? So... I really don't know what to expect there. This Battle Royal kind of came out of nowhere, but some of these participants came out and they were just watching from ringside. I really don't understand why, especially if there isn't no juicy, or isn't any, I apologize, just in case there's any English teachers out there listening. There isn't any major stakes. You know, there isn't any, I guess, juicy stipulations. I don't know. I, I like these Battle Royals to mean something, especially at SummerSlam where you talked about it. This could be like something that sets up as like a mini Royal Rumble. I think I might have mentioned it last week by myself, mm-hmm. but sets up like a mini that. Royal Rumble just to kind of get you through the fall, and it's for the mid card, you know. So the United States Championship makes sense. Obviously, I talked about it. I don't want it to be something that ends up having a SmackDown wrestler have to go over to Raw to uh, to chase that Intercontinental Championship. But as long as that doesn't happen, then I'm totally fine with that. I guess fantasy book coming true. Continuing on here, let's see. The brawl ends up breaking out at ringside after Austin Theory comes out in cheap shots. Santos Escobar really doesn't stop the match, though, because it's just all the people involved. None of the the actual participants in the match, as in Sheamus and L.A. Knight, they didn't get involved. So the match went on, and L.A. Knight is still able to walk away with a win over the Celtic Warrior. The appropriate finish, I didn't really like the... Other participants coming out and kind of making it a little bit funky. I think a clean match, a clean win over Sheamus would have been a little bit more of a momentum builder going into tomorrow. But, like I said, they didn't really get involved. It was just the the distraction aspect. So what do you think about LA Knight getting the win over Sheamus? Well, I mean, this one, I mean, it worked. I mean, LA Knight definitely, I guess, deserves this in a way. But, I mean... The like you're saying, the people coming out and just like spectating, watching it as if they were just like fans. I mean, that 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 didn't really do anything for me. Like you were saying, it kind of took away from the the build of it. But the little botch, you know. Yeah. La Knight, he went try to jump up on top of the uh, corner buckle, you know, do the little flip, and they ended up falling off that. Like, um, oh, I know exactly which one you're talking about. Caleb showed me something on his phone during that moment, Mm -hmm. and I didn't see it. But at the very beginning of the match, the one where L.A. Knight just did, like, the crossbody dive, and they both went over the ropes. I thought that was pretty nice, though. Yeah. It it didn't look like a smooth transition over the rope, but, I mean, the whole thought of the move Execution, Mm -hmm. 100% got the job done. But, yeah, I mean, 
I'm with you on that. That spot that I missed was probably one of the uh, the more juicier points in that match. But either way, I'm excited with how it ended. Yeah, and I do like that white noise that Seamus had hit on the uh, edge of the apron. It looked like it definitely. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was a very physical match. That, that I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, when he had him right there and he jumps off yeah. off the apron to the ground, but he drops LA Knight right there on the side on the of the side, ring. Ooh, yeah. that hurt. Yeah. Hurt that to watch, right I guess. There. But yes. I, I feel like they definitely put up a good show for us. But like I said, the only thing that bothered me was the people on the outside. Yes, and great way to start the show because, mm-hmm. like I said, it got us who we wanted to see, which is LA Knight. Immediately, the crowd pumping, they're ready to go. And that's really what you want to do. You want to take advantage of this hot crowd on a go-home show. Mm-hmm. Let's I think, see. I think it's real fitting that they do, like, you know, when they do the yeah, boo, you know, and then, of course, L.A. Knight being a, the one getting the yes. Oh, yeah. It, it definitely works out. And then also just Sheamus in the corner whenever he kind of fell down unexpectedly and then showed off his strength by just pulling oh, himself up. Yeah. Sheamus isn't supposed to do stuff like that. That's almost like Kane when that's Kane would do freakishly like athletic stuff. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, I just I always appreciated that about Kane. How he was like a a massive dually truck or like a King Ranch truck with oh, a yeah. Ferrari engine. You know, <laughs> like he moves fast like for it. his I size. Like it. But let's continue on here in the show. We get a little face off backstage between the Brawling Brutes and OC, which does lead to a tag team match. We get to that here in just a second. Immediately after that, the little face off, Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar saga with a little video package that catches you up to their Backlash match, catches you up to their Night of Champions match, and how they each have one win apiece. We're set up for the rubber match here at SummerSlam, the final chapter in this rivalry. What do you think about the way it's been built as far as, you know, Cody and Brock, you saw that video package. I mean, it's a lot better whenever you're watching, you know, a highlight reel. That's pretty much what these WWE video packages are, just highlight reels. Whereas if you watch raw every single week and you're watching this program being built it might not be as cinematic if that makes sense but anyways i'm a fan of it i will say just cody rhodes and a little sidebar if you haven't already seen the cody rhodes documentary american nightmare becoming cody rhodes on peacock great stuff great stuff i will say just the way that they they put it together obviously it's like two hours long so you know that it's filled with a bunch of depth everything they talk about they go really deep into it whether it's stardust him going to the indie scene his athletic career before he ever became a professional wrestler just what he was as a high school athlete it was pretty insightful i will say and it gets really emotional man there's there's moments in the show where he's he's talking about his dad and it's really soon you you could tell the the wounds are still pretty fresh as far as when his dad passed away and it's not really spoiling it anything or anything like that but he um he's really like you could tell the camera got him in a spot where he was extremely vulnerable like emotional his chin his bottom lip is just quivering as he's trying to talk and get words out you know talking about his father and things like that and i can't relate to that from a parent passing away perspective because i know that some people have and that's extremely difficult that's something that you know obviously you never want to wish on anybody and you could tell that he was dealing with something that maybe those people can relate to. But whenever you talk about just absolute raw pain, like someone who is just dealing with something and is just going through it, like that's something that most people can relate to. And you could tell that it was just real pain that Cody was dealing with there. And there's a lot of moments in that documentary that kind of paint the picture and show you that it isn't all sunshine and rainbows for Cody Rhodes and his, you know, come up here and, And that there really is a story to finish. That's one thing that I will say people kind of laugh at. You know, finish the story, whatever. It didn't happen in WrestleMania 39. Is it going to happen down the line? Who knows? This documentary did a really good job making it very hard to not cheer for this guy. So I'll just kind of leave it at that and tell you definitely when you get a chance to uh, start that bad boy, it might take you a little bit to finish. You probably won't be able to watch it in one sitting unless you're just, you know, free for an afternoon. But either way, you got to get that in. Uh, let's yeah, see definitely here. have to check that out. Yes, sir. Yeah, where am I at in my notes? Oh, yeah. OC versus the Brutes. Both teams have hot streaks during this match and seem to be on their way to win. Obviously, they both have momentum at some point during the match. However, the new and improved Street Profits come out, break this bad boy up, causing it to end in a disqualification. 
And then Bobby Lashley comes out to massive Bobby Lashley chants, or just Lashley. I was surprised how over he was in Dayton, Ohio. They were chanting his name like L.A. Knight. Do you agree with me there? As oh, yeah, it was, yeah. was a pretty he, wild He definitely article. got a nice pop on I me. Mean, it was crazy to see him just come out and everybody just start. I figured at least Street Profits to get some type of chant going. But For sure. Yeah, straight to Bobby. Yeah, and then when you looked at the Street Profits, not only were they freshly dressed, had mm -hmm. their really nice clothes on, but Angelo Dawkins had that nice little fade going Sweet. on. Obviously, yeah. had that little cut in his hair. That, slit, that was nice. Yeah. They are, without a doubt, on to greener pastures, I feel like, from what they've been doing over the past few years. It was nice while it lasted. It got them through several years in WWE, which isn't anything to sneeze at. It's hard enough to get to WWE, let alone be on the main roster for so long, be featured in several tag team programs, and, I mean, just get so much TV time. And, you know, that's what their old gimmick got them. We'll see what this new one does. Obviously, change isn't always good, but I do think in this certain instance, it's going to be a welcoming change, and I think they're going to be entering a very good chapter in their career as a tag team because I think it was either this or they split up. Oh, yeah. And there is still some meat on the bone of them as a tag team. So leave them together. Just change up what they do. And this is the right way to do that. Get him paired up with Lashley. It also gives Lashley some more lackeys where he's not in the hurt business. This is a new little version of this. It's it's a different dynamic. And I'm excited to see where it goes. Are you a fan of this new version of the Street Profits? Well, I mean, I feel like they definitely stole the show. You know, the whole match. After they came out, it kind of felt like it was just like a little welcome for them. And I, I think it works. I mean, they definitely got the little suits going i know montez ford he's always been a little on the stylish side you know so he's been with that part of it but the whole uh gimmick change for angelo dawkins i believe that that works i mean i thought my eyes were on him that whole time the you know butch hopping on his back it felt like he was a uh, person that was more involved in this little altercation so yeah they're definitely up on the book for me for sure. Sign me up for this. I need I need more of a fresh coat of paint on more mm -hmm. wrestlers. Up next, we get Charlotte cutting a promo on a yacht. Really, the only thing to take away from this long-winded promo was she's 5-0 at SummerSlam. They said that for a reason, in my personal opinion. I don't think they would bring that up for her to suddenly become 5-1. I know that she probably added it in there. It's her promo. I don't really know how she cuts them these days. I know that she's usually one of the most line blurring in terms of is this real is this scripted did she kind of shoot there what's going on charlotte's one of the one of the few that i feel like is herself on the mic there, there's several but from the women's division charlotte's in a league of her own when it comes to cutting promos like that these days but anyways she also mentions that she's a 14-time champ, 5-0 and at SummerSlam. Why not go to 6-0 and, and get your 15th Women's Championship belt? It just seems like it's writing itself. It's poetic justice. I don't know if you agree with that because there are two other very good wrestlers that she's going to be going up against tomorrow night. Where do you stand on Charlotte? Well, of course, she's up there in the book. I mean, top woman, and I can't put no damper on her name. But other than that, man, I'm kind of on the Bianca Belair side. Oh, sorry, I mean, I can definitely feel this in my throat whenever I say her you name for swig? some reason. No, but yeah, I feel like uh, th there's a little bit more to the story rather than the uh, Charlotte side. I mean, of course, there's the whole 15-time champion that she can become and everything, but I definitely feel like Bianca Belair should be the person that wins out of this uh, triple threat. I agree, for and sure. Ju just to mention, it's it kind of sucks that we are – overlooking oscar i know she's the way, champion because she she's is, for sure probably gonna she win is that. good you know yeah i definitely feel like she's good but it, it just doesn't feel like this is the time for her right now yeah i'm with you i believe in bianca but the charlotte mm -hmm. what is it what's the word i'm looking for the accolade part mm -hmm. you know where she has a chance to go to 15 women's championships while also being six and oh yeah that means something to me so if Charlotte walks out as champion, I definitely won't be surprised at all. Let me see where we are now. Oh, yeah, History of the Tribal Combat. This one was pretty long. There was a lot to take in. If you're taking notes live like we were, you were no way going to get everything. Like I'm not a, a media journalist or anything like that where I can sit there and type into my computer while I'm interviewing a head coach or something like that. Like No, I'm trying to also enjoy the show while simultaneously – Highlighting all the important moments. And that's what I was trying to do here. 
Heyman pretty much cuts a promo in the ring, cutting down Jey Uso, blaming him for everything going on, like we've already heard time and time again, while also putting over Roman Reigns. Your typical Heyman spiel, although it's repetitive, he does good every single time. And then we get a pretty good video package. I believe Sika, Roman Reigns' father, is also featured in this. They're pretty much explaining tribal combat, what it means, the history of the Ulafala, and getting you prepared for this very important match tomorrow that's going to be very physical. As you would expect, Jey Uso comes out very, very passionate. He's telling Paul Heyman what's going to happen tomorrow night, how he's going to light Roman Reigns up with a kendo stick, a chair, and because he's the head of the table... You're damn sure he's going through it or something along those lines. I definitely yeah, didn't give him right justice there. because, man, he hit that whenever he, he actually said it in real time. But Solo Sokoa inevitably comes out, gives Jey Uso the death stare, all while Jey Uso is trying to convince him to see through the lies that he's being fed by Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns. All of the, the orders and everything that he's been doing. Jey Uso saying, I have been down that path. You are following my footsteps and you've seen where it leads you. Don't make the same mistake I made. Jump off the train now. It seems like Solo is actually listening a little bit. We've seen this from Solo yeah. where he kind of gives that look. Paul Heyman immediately gets on the microphone, tries to tell Jay to shut up, and Solo isn't going to listen to him. Solo tells Paul Heyman to leave. Paul Heyman doesn't leave. So once Solo gets a little bit louder and he literally yells at Paul Heyman to get out of the ring, he's hit with a super kick, and he's super kicked out of the ring, literally. And Paul Heyman flinches whenever Jey Uso kind of lunges at him a little bit. What do you think about this explanation? I mean, it was a long segment. I'm not even going to try to give the time. But what do you think about, you know, what all happened here with Jey Uso, Paul Heyman, and Sol Sokoa? Well, I mean, I'm just kind of glad that Jey Uso is at least kind of getting to Solo. Like you mentioned, I mean, he kind of told him, you know, following exactly what I did. And like you said, it looks like Solo's – at least somewhat listening in a way, you know, because he really doesn't say much. But what had got me was whenever he started to tell Paul Heyman to leave the ring. And that that was just kind of off to me right there. But, I mean, Jey Uso, man, he definitely has the crowd. I mean, it's crazy how, like, just in a span of, like, what, maybe like a month, as everything has kind of, like, switched over from, you know, them being bloodline to – just being him by himself, basically, you know, given the fact that Jimmy's uh, hurt and everything. But other than that, man, I feel like I feel like Jay. I mean, he's doing a good job trying to put himself into those shoes of being the next tribal chief. You know, I mean, definitely. He's already uh, the real chief. You not seen his merch? The good shirt right there. Good shirt. I right like there. the Jay so on the back. Oh, that, that little how brand it's written out. That's yeah. sick. Yeah, it As definitely the uh, change from, like, the finger up, you know, the thumb on the back and everything. So, I mean, it's it, it's it's cool to see. But, man, it's just, I mean, the, the way he's just carrying himself, I mean, I'm definitely with it, man. I'm definitely not against what this man's got going on and stuff. But, I mean, yeah, hopefully, hopefully Solo kind of opens his eyes, I guess, and just makes the right decision whenever this happens tomorrow because I think something big is going to happen rather than just a, of course, one-on-one -on -one match, but there's going to have to be some type of distraction or at least some type of event that's going to make this kind of switch, I think. For sure. I'm with you on that. Let's see. There were two squash matches, or not squash matches, just quick matches during the second half of SmackDown. One of them was Austin Theory versus Cameron Grimes. Mm-hmm. Austin Theory gets the win. You don't want your United States champion to lose again. He already lost to Santos Escobar. If you were going to lose to Cameron Grimes on SmackDown, and Cameron Grimes is pretty good coming up from NXT. He's looked really well since he's been on SmackDown, and I'm intrigued to see where he goes. But I don't care if Austin Theory has to gouge his eyes, put his feet on the rope, use a weapon. I don't care how he gets the win. As long as he, as long as he gets the win, that's really all we need to continue going according to plan for him losing this United States Championship and you know, eventually. But like I told you, whenever his music hit, even if you didn't know that he was about to have a match, you knew that he was about to have a match because they're not going to give him much time on the mic. So he wasn't going to come out to cut a long promo or anything like that. He's pretty much just you know getting that... I don't know what treatment, because it's not the silent treatment, you know, where they're not mm -hmm. giving opportunities on the microphone. Mm-hmm. Like we've seen them do to people in the past. Like Brock Lesnar for a very long time, he just flat out didn't work without Paul Heyman. 
because he, the dude can't cut promos. Now he can go by himself. You know, this cowboy Brock, he's able yeah. to get in programs where he doesn't need Paul Heyman to be his mouthpiece. It's almost like Austin Theory. He doesn't need a mouthpiece because he, whenever he cuts a promo, it's not like it's awful. It's just you don't feel anything. You know, yeah. it's, you know, we probably wrote it down on the trip to whatever city they're in and probably really thought it out, said it to himself oh, time and time again. And like John Cena called him out for, there's nothing to him. You know, he's just mm-hmm. so cookie cutter. Yeah. He's, he's cliche. He's default. But I don't know. That's kind of how I feel. I'm not really a fan of him as the United States champion right now. But he does defeat Cameron Grimes. We also get the announcement. Kid Rock is going to be at SummerSlam tomorrow in nice, his hometown nice. of Detroit. Really quickly, shout out to Detroit Kyle. Shout out to Double J, obviously, and anybody else who is in Detroit or the Michigan area just who's getting SummerSlam in Fort Field. That's great. Fort Field was like the home of WrestleMania 22 or 23. I don't really know the exact year. This was several, several years ago, like, what, 16, 17 years ago? So give me a break that I don't know the exact year that this WrestleMania happened, but I know that it was in Fort Field. So the fact that they're getting a SummerSlam, just tells you that Detroit is well known as a very loud and proud wrestling city. Mm-hmm. Oscar has a video package up next after the uh, the Kid Rock announcement. I don't really know if she says anything because we had the TV muted. We were talking. This happened a little bit earlier while we were doing the live review. We saw Oscar come up. I'm sorry. I don't really know if Oscar's ever cut a promo that's made me feel anything. So. With what we were talking about, I felt like it was more important that we continued our discussion. We didn't unmute it. And now that I am reviewing the show in hindsight, I can see that that was her, you know, Charlotte on the yacht. Bianca cuts a promo in the gym. I don't really know because I was looking at you. We were kind of having the discussion. I don't really know exactly where Asuka was set up, so forgive me there, guys. But nonetheless, Asuka had her time to shine, just like the other two in that triple threat match. Following Asuka's little video package... We get the Grayson Waller effect, and he doesn't waste any time. He immediately asks EO, are you cashing in tomorrow? And I already alluded to it last week or whatever. I think she kind of tipped her hand that she might be cashing in, whether that's going to be successful, TBD. But I think she might have tipped her hand a little bit a couple weeks ago. We'll let that play out a little bit. But EO doesn't get an opportunity to speak for herself Mm -hmm. because Bailey immediately interrupts her, doesn't let her respond, and she's pretty much just trying to you know, shoot it down, doing her typical, like, calling the crowd idiots, all that good stuff. But the joke immediately turns, and it flips. Whenever we hear Shotzi's voice coming through the speakers, Bailey kind of freaks out a little bit. She thinks she's being pranked because Grayson Waller busts out laughing. And then Shotzi's music hits. She thinks she's being pranked again, but she's clearly not. We see Shotzi's tank come out and stay at the very top of the ramp. But Shotzi appears in the ring, They go at it for a little bit. A few punches are thrown, but Shotzi does chase her around the ring with trimmers or clippers, whatever whatever you call them. They're on. They're buzzing. You could hear them buzzing, and they run around. They run through, you know, the crowd. We think they're gone. We think that they just got out of the way because Zelina Vega was the one who was in the tank disguising herself as Shotzi so she could distract Bailey, so Shotzi could sneak up from behind. It was a well-done little trick, I will say. It was a job well done by the women involved. But we get Zelina Vega versus Io Sky. They go at it for a very short period of time. Like I said, this was the other very quick match here in the second hour of SmackDown. And I mentioned Bailey and Shotzi chasing around or running around through the crowd. They come back out through Gorilla, through the entrance, and are standing right there at the top of the stage. And Bailey has to fight for her life to keep Shotzi from taking some inches off of her hair. That distracts EO Sky just long enough for Zelina Vega to hit the code red and secure the win for herself. Do you think Bailey's going to get a haircut sometime soon? Do you think they're kind of teasing us or is it just one of those little things where they're trying to scare us? Although I will say, like, you can answer that question. Keep in mind, is Bailey going to get a haircut? But there's fans that are criticizing WWE for not making it a hair versus hair match for Shotzi because she was willing to cut her hair. They could have really had a good program going on that we haven't seen in a long time since maybe Victoria and Molly Holly women's hair versus hair match where a woman actually puts her hair on the line especially both of these women they look good with long hair so it would have been actually meaningful you could have let bailey get the win and done it at SummerSlam. but shotzi i don't believe wanted it to be storyline related she didn't want it to be or at least like that because it technically was storyline related like she got hair cut off so i and 
that same breath, you're like, well, why don't why not just go a step further and actually go full on with the hair versus hair match? But because it was for her sister, I think that she didn't want that to be completely overshadowed by something as meaningful as obviously a hair versus hair match, which would have taken the cake, which would have been all we were thinking about because we don't get those very often. I remember Chris Jericho versus Kevin Nash, hair versus hair match back in like 2003, maybe four, I want to say. I don't know the exact year. Now, I'm now honestly, because of those reviews, I'm scared <laughs> to even question myself. I'm, I'm honestly, I don't know if I, should, if I can't, like I need to just do more research, I guess, if I know, hey, you might end up bringing up a hair versus hair match in this live SmackDown review. Yeah. So make sure you know all the, the history and all the dates that go behind that. But 2003, 2004, I'm confident it was in one of those two years that we got that hair versus hair match. But back to the original question, do you think Bailey at some point is going to get her wig chopped? Well, honestly, I wouldn't want to see that. I don't feel like Bailey has the like the head shape to go bald in a way where at least shaved down, you know, Shotzi, she looks at least like a, a little doll figure, you know, lose the hair type stuff, you know, Angelica, you know, uh, Cynthia, Cynthia, there you go from the rag rats, rats. Type stuff. you know, I can see her in that little form of way. I mean, of course her hair was all janky and stuff like that, but I mean, I'm talking about just like the face shape and everything. So Shotzi more fitting Bailey. I wouldn't be able to get behind her if she, cut her hair yes Shotzi can pull it off but I will say it's a little like if I saw her running at me laughing like that I'd probably mm-hmm. run away too just being completely honest so it's more believable on her end that's why I feel like she can play that little role that she got going on with this little I, was, I had a big I was a big fan of Shotzi's green hair oh yeah huge yeah. fan love yeah. Bailey's hair too I'm a big fan of Bailey's whole aesthetic her gear, the whole package. I'm a fan of Bailey's look. But let's go ahead and continue. We get Bianca Belair. She cuts her promo from the gym. Confident was enough to get you to believe in her tomorrow, correct? Or no? Do you not believe in Bianca? Oh, uh, yeah. Bianca, she's the... She's not confident enough to pick her. Oh, yeah. I'm picking her. Oh, you're picking her yeah, to win. I'm, okay. I'm definitely picking her to win. I mean, like, like I said, I feel like there's a little bit more to it on her end just because, you know... I forgot how many, like 400 plus days that she was holding. She was champ from WrestleMania through another WrestleMania all yeah, the way yeah. up to this summer whenever she lost to Asuka. Yeah, definitely so, just something I didn't want to see, you know, just the whole situation. I mean, the mist is part of the gimmick, but I just don't believe that Bianca should have lost to Asuka. So that, that that's my little situation right there. I mean, yeah, she definitely can do a little bit better and – Hold the title a little bit longer, you know? That, yeah. That's what I want to see. The last thing here for us to talk about, Jey Uso versus Solo Sokoa, brother versus brother, not talked about enough. I mean, this match really wasn't a long-term buildup, but still, imagine if Kane and Undertaker went at it. Mm-hmm. Imagine if it was Jimmy versus Jay. So, in fact, this is his brother, too, you know? Why do we not get yeah, that yeah. type of, I guess, hype behind it? I don't know. I, I just feel like... They don't put the the video packages together like how they're doing, like with some of the. They're more focused stories. on the tribal combat. Yeah, like the whole, like the bigger picture, rather than just like the smaller pieces to kind of like carry us along through this story, you know. And that, that that's my kind of thing. I just felt like, I mean, of course, Solo being damn near mute, you know. I mean, that's kind of hard to, because we just get Paul Heyman doing the same thing that he's doing for Roman Reigns in a way. So I mean. It's, I don't know. I mean, it's all good stuff, but like you're saying, it's just hard to yeah. kind of follow those two as competitor versus competitor. Yeah, and their trajectory was so different in terms of when one of them got to WWE and the other one. You're like, Jay mm-hmm. Uso was so established already as a tag team wrestler and already the brother of Jimmy, and they have a career together as one of the greatest tag teams of all time. And then all of a sudden, years into their career, we find out, oh, wait, they have a brother in developmental that's coming up through NXT. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, he comes up to the bloodline. And sure enough, he gets a jetpack on his back, skyrocketing to the top to the main event picture on SmackDown alongside Roman Reigns and the bloodline. He's had a nice run for sure. I definitely won the draft. Keep in mind who's the hottest wrestler <laughs> in WWE right now, okay? L.A. night, but like I said, oh, we need to revisit there. it. He's There's still a whole third of the year to go on, man, mm-hmm. all right? Hey. The 2023 is only halfway over. 
we we don't know what's going on with LA night right now. We got to study uphill with solo. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Like I said, I got I to gotta go back and revisit that. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, I drafted. There I go again. Not being Me not being 100% <laughs> sure is your, I guess you could say. That's hey, what we're man. battling here. It goes hand in hand over here. Okay? We're battling our demons, okay? <laughs> I hear voices in my head like Randy Orton that are telling me to say, I'm not 100% sure on that because I don't want to commit, damn it. I'm scared of commitment. I don't want to commit to one side of the fence. Mm-hmm. If I'm not 100% sure, got to be facts. Either way, we're you know we're growing here. We're improving here on the show. And as far as this main event goes, Jey Uso versus Solo, approximately 15 minute match, physical as hell, going back and forth. Jey Uso does beat Solo Sokoa clean. One of the few clean losses that Solo has received. I know Cody Rhodes beat him clean. Now Jey Uso's beating him clean. Except he hit him with a spear. Is that going to be something that he does here going forward? I think they're working on it for a reason. Spear Uso splash. Big Brother gets to win. And I'm not talking about the streaming show on Paramount Plus, I believe. Big Brother. I don't know. It's a it's a show. You ever heard of it? Mm-hmm. Okay, just making yeah. sure. But yeah, you know what we're talking about here. Yeah. Jey Uso gets the win. He's going into Detroit. One of the biggest matches of his entire career. This is for all the marbles. If he loses, it's going to throw some water on his fire. Oh, yeah. Depending on how the match goes, he can give Roman Reigns absolute hell, have near fall after near fall, just put on an absolute show, and the true wrestling fans, the ones that, that appreciate the bell-to-bell action, are going to come out and say, you know what? Hell of a job, Jay. You don't, I, don't, I don't look at you any different. But there are going to be the, the other side, the other fraction of the people that are going to say, hey, you know, it was a fun story, but you've lost to Roman Reigns now several times. You beat him in a tag match. But you had your moment in 2020. Now here we are in 2023. You get another opportunity, and you didn't capitalize. So we're kind of past it now, and we're moving on to greener pastures or just other wrestlers that we feel like have a shot to dethrone Roman Reigns. I agree with Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins came out and said, it's got to be me or Jey Uso. I think that he's right. At this point, who else? Because we're past the point of it being like some young up-and-comer like, it better Solo, be the man. next John Cena if you're having him dethrone Roman Reigns. Solo. There, 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 so I'm, you're you're throwing a third name into the hat. Yeah. Okay. I I think that there's going to be some type of switch. He's going to be the person that turns on Roman. It could happen. We're seeing these little seeds being planted. So you think Ro- Solo Sokoa could win the Rumble maybe? Because that would be an organic build. Dave Batista won the Rumble. He was still in a faction with Evolution. Triple H was the leader They're of that group. Belts. Well, Triple H was the world heavyweight champion, mm-hmm. and Batista won the, the championship. That's what that figure up there is, is him going thumbs down, holding up SmackDown because he chose Raw to go after Triple H, and that was the turn. Triple H and Ric Flair were desperately, Ric Flair, I apologize, were desperately trying to get Dave Batista to go over to SmackDown, challenge mm-hmm. JBL for the WWE championship. He wasn't about that. He was like, I, mean, I know where I want to go. I know yeah. what championship I want. Who wouldn't want that world heavyweight championship? Big gold. Most beautiful belt in all of professional wrestling history. I'll go out and say it. I know it's not unanimous. People love the Winged Eagle. People love that White Intercontinental Championship. A lot of other belts get a lot of love. But that World Heavyweight Championship, that's the only belt that has been the belt for two companies. WCW was the main belt over there for a period of time. And then, exact same thing on WWE during the Ruthless Aggression era. I don't care what side of the fence people sit on, man. Triple H was the best heel in the company at the time, and he had that championship belt. They just, they're synonymous with each other. Ric Flair was there, someone who held that same belt several, several times. It was just brilliant stuff, man. That belt, I can go on on and on about that bad boy. But either way, how do you feel about where we are as the go home show, you know, going into SummerSlam? How do you feel about your boy Jay? Think he's got a shot tomorrow? To end it? To end Roman Reigns' streak? See, man, this is the tough part because I I, I really don't know at this point. I'm kind of at that, okay, I don't know where we're going to branch out to after this. I I don't know what's going to happen before this type thing. So this is kind of just like one of those matches that I'm just wanting to see to see what follows. So at this point, like I was saying, it's just a up in the air thing for me, and I'm with it all day, for sure. For sure, for sure. I'm, 
I'm excited for the SummerSlam card. I love the logo once it was announced. Going to an oh, NFL yeah. stadium, you know that's big stuff right there. They're going to fill up Ford Field, or at least wrestling version of fill it up. And I'm here for it, man. I love a oh, good yeah. pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. It's not Chili Dog. I'm not, it's not good enough for me to bring out the Chili Dogs, okay? That's WrestleMania. Oh. Then we bring out the Chili Dogs. Just tradition. But either way, great stuff is coming here tomorrow or today, whenever you're listening to this and beyond as we get into the fall so stay tuned. If you did enjoy the show, I hope you did. Continue giving us feedback. That's one thing that we want here on the show. I appreciate those of you. You know who you are if you reached out, whether it's on Discord, Twitter, or Patreon. And, uh, you know, gave some honest feedback because that's, that's one thing we want here. We want the show to be enjoyable. It's for you guys. You know, we do this, obviously, for Matt to help him out so he can continue and keep this well-oiled machine going where he already knows the show is going to come at a certain time we really take pride in our show being consistent in that aspect but also we want it to be a good product so yeah let's let's figure out a way to make sure that this is enjoyable for everybody and um it's going to be a good a good fall i love fall my birthday's in fall football season it's no secret i have a football function podcast like it's it's something that i do all the time you know i focus in on football religiously in fact my wrestling watching usually goes down a little bit during the fall but smackdown every week no matter what that's something that does not change i did cut the cord officially oh yeah no more direct tv so we're we're fire sticking it for the the actual smackdown review but for nfl we're getting we're not getting youtube tv the actual you know plan but we are purchasing nfl sunday ticket which you can do by itself so Great stuff, great stuff. I'm I'm a big fan of fall. Turn thirty, here coming too. And I talked about it a little yeah, bit yeah. on the last show. You actually just turned thirty, so I'm right there with you, bud. I'm coming. I'm just trying to enjoy the uh, the breeze while I can here on the, the twenty last side. Months, man, it's gonna go by fast. I'm I'm dreading it intentionally, so it'll go by fast because of all the good stuff that's coming, all the trips and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit of a chess move. I'm pretending to dread it, so it'll go fast. <laughs> Either way, uh, you got anything to say? Any it, it shout outs? Any out. uh, parting words? Well, of course, I mean, just going to sh- get straight to it. Of course, the criticism, the reviews, man, I, I don't take it to heart. I mean, of course, I'm not a professional. Don't do this. But plenty of times out the week, I guess. Dang, I'm messing up already. But I only do this for the SmackDown review. You know, I'm, like I said, not a professional. But I come out here and I try to break this down. As best I can on my remembering there is not what Mike's is. And this dude, he can break down a whole segment, you know, word for word, pretty much, you know, and it's crazy. Blows my mind. But other than that, man, I mean, I'm just out here trying to enjoy this WWE universe. Y'all listen to this. I mean, yeah, just shoot it back to us. Let us know what's going on, what we're messing up on, what we're doing good on. You know, it's it's a back and forth type little war that we got going on right here. But I mean, it's part of it. I mean, of course, there's people that are going to like what we say. There's people that aren't going to like what we say. I mean, it's our it's our opinion. You know, y'all listen to us, and we appreciate it, you know. So I'm going to just leave it at that. Like I said, not, nothing bad. I'm, I'm definitely going to try and work on my phrases, you know. Give we're trying to get some – we're, we're going to wash his mouth out with soap <laughs> after this episode, all right? That's just what oh, the, yeah. you guys oh, need yeah. to know. It's coming. J- just know the power of editing is – Making this a lot smoother. Let's but. just say that if we did not have the power of editing, <laughs> this episode would have been just like every other one. And I'm sure and, that we did let a couple slide. They, 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 they would be drunk. If, oh, if, if it were the shot game, yeah. Let's just say if the shot game turned into every time we had deposit that, or that, something that like so that. That was so funny, bro. That, that was probably the funniest one that I had read right there. I mean, it, it was a five star review. I mean, so it wasn't a bad. Yeah. So, if they're I mean, five it, stars, it, yeah. It, it, it was funny, you know. So it, it was something that I was just. I'm beating myself up for it, I guess you could say. There goes and don't a, beat yourself up one. too much for but, it, for sure. Because I think one thing people do have to remember is, number one, if you're a new listener, you might not know this, but if you're a longtime listener, you know that John isn't as hardcore of a wrestling fan as far as like his tenure. Mm-hmm. He started watching again, what, in 2020? Uh, 19. 2019? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, so even well, that, again, you know, I mean, yeah. well, of course I watched it as a kid. As a kid, like like but, all of us, you know, we all watch wrestling, but whenever you get older, you tend to focus on other things. You mm-hmm. tend to get drawn in different directions, and everybody, for the most part, has a period in their life 
where they were distant from wrestling. Not everybody. Yeah, there are yeah. some people that went all the way through. And unless it just gets absolutely unwatchable, I'm a lifer. I'm in this bad boy from like till the jump because I watched it very passionately as a kid. And I drifted away and I was kind of new whenever I got older and I kind of, you know, got my own little setup and I settled down that I was going to start watching wrestling again, yeah. you know, and I was going to make it part of my routine. And we've gotten there. I love that we're there. And unless, like I said, it becomes unwatchable, I'm not going anywhere. I don't want to go anywhere as far as this podcast goes. I want to continue doing this SmackDown. That's why I do want the listeners to be happy. I want the listeners to continue to listen to the SmackDown review. And if you do end up giving us the reviews... If they are negative, come to us directly, you know, because, well, that's one thing that we will will always take. You can even ask the people that have reached out and said, hey, this is what we don't like about the show. I mean, this is something that a couple months ago I, I didn't want to say anything about it, but, hey, this pissed me off back in whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. There was a couple of those, you know, so keep them coming. Like we said, we got thick skin over here, but like I said, hey, if you can't take it, you better not dish it out because <laughs> these chihuahuas bite back. There you go. But uh, anyways – Anything else? Uh, of course. I mean, shout out to Discord, Patreon members. Big shout out to Detroit, Detroit Kyle. Kyle. He's going to be live in attendance. Oh, he's at SummerSlam? Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, that's going to be pretty cool. Of course, he said that he's going to keep us updated and everything. So, that's something to look out for in the Discord chat. Of course, tomorrow, you know, there's going to be a lot of talking in that little chat. So, if y'all want to come and join this, Patreon members, of course, you know, dollar a month, get you in. And, you know, have some good conversation with some WWE fans, you know. So, it's some good stuff right there. But other than that, shout out Football Function. You know, you got a good season coming up. Oh, hopefully, yeah. Got a new show Atlanta coming. Falcons do a little bit better. And, of course, hopefully the Oakland Raiders or Las Vegas Raiders. Sorry. Sorry. Kind of getting used to He's that. He's a Raiders team, but, fan, okay? But, yeah, Raiders fan over here. Gosh, dang it. But, yeah, hopefully we do something with Jimmy. You know, something – surprising i guess because i don't feel like we traded up for anything better you know Derek Carr, jimmy Graham. it was a lateral move it, it yeah. feels like yeah yeah it's just, it's just it wasn't a, straight, a forward yeah. move but other than that man i mean yeah i'm gonna close it out like that all right guys you guys have a damn good weekend enjoy SummerSlam. walk passionately in the direction of your dreams and we'll talk to you soon Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to WWEPodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to Patreon.com slash WWEPodcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.